here we come with the next point that is advantages of the manure what are the advantages that we can have a look of the advantages of the manure now first point is that it will have lot of humus so it will be holding the plants and the crops very properly which will not allow them to move afar from the soil which is very important point for the crops the second point it will be making it porous so that the exchange of the gases will be done very nicely so that the roots will go penetrate deep into the soil properly now the next point that comes it increases the number of the friendly microbes as we know that manure is prepared in the organic way thus it will be developing and making and helping the microbes to develop very properly whereas the fertilizers will be killing them because they are completely made with the chemicals only so in comparison to the fertilizers manure are beneficial in these manners now the next point that comes is it improves the texture of the soil as we know that whatever the things which are we are using in the natural way so manure is the natural one which will be used for by the decomposed things or biodegradable things so it will be giving us lot of profit in this way now we come with the next point that is known as irrigation irrigation word say something about the water related to water now we know that when we are planting the plants we need to pour some water in it otherwise they will not be developing properly now what is the requirement or what are the needs that why we need to pour the water in the plants the three points are there first of all that it will require the water will be required by the plants to develop the seed will germinate inside the soil with the help of the water only it will sprout and then it will come to the sapling part and then the plants will be growing the second point that comes the nutrients will be dissolved in the soil which are in the soil will be dissolved with the water and then it will be taken by the roots in the easy way that is why the water is being required by the plants to develop the third thing that comes it protects the crop from the frost and the hot streams thus it will be protecting them and holding them properly in the soil the roots will not be coming out if the water is present over there now here comes that what is the definition of the irrigation now the supply of water to the crops at a particular time interval is known as irrigation again repeating the supply of water to the crops in a particular time interval is called irrigation on and often if supplying water to the same crop will destroy the crop or if a long time duration is taken to cropping uh, to have the watering to the crops will also destroy the crops but it is said that supplying of water to the crop at a particular interval of the time will be known as irrigation so we have to take care about the time durations now here comes that what are the sources now sources means we know that a source means what a substance which is uh, carrying a huge amount of a particular thing is called a source so what are the sources of the water means the things which contain lot of water inside it means the lake the river the oceans the uh, ponds that is nearby our places but we know that we can take the water which is good for the crops so we cannot take the sea water or the ocean water but what about the coastal areas they will be ha having the same water only so the crops which are growing over there nearby the coastal areas will be having the coconut and the bananas okay so what are the aspects for the irrigation in our areas where we are not in the coastal region so we have to develop the crops by irrigating from the lakes ponds or the rivers now here we will get the pure water which is from the nature that is the main source as the rain now these waters will be supplied to them but in different manner we never knew that where our farms are suppose my farm is near to the source of the water it is good enough to supply the water but what about the farms those who are far away from the sources of the water we need to have some steps to let the water go over there we cannot have the river maintain to the go over there so let us see what are the methods by which we can irrigate the farms which are far away from the sources of the water or they are near or close to the sources of the water let's have a look at that we have two methods here first is the traditional method and the other we have is the modern method now we know that traditional method means what from olden days it is being carried out let us look at them the first method is the moat that is the pulley system in this what happens there is a picture you can see over there on the screen you will find that the a person or the farmer is taking out the water by the way of the pulley which is hanged on the well 
So the person has to take out the water by the help of the bag or a container hanged on the thread or the rope. Now what will happen? The person have to pour out the water directly to the nearby areas where he can have the cropping. Okay. So this is what the method of the pulley system is known as because we are using the pulley on the well head. So it is known as a pulley system which was an ancient method not nowadays. Now the second method that comes here is the chain pump. A farm which is little bit close to the sources of the water. Here we can use the chain pump or the where the purpose of the farming or the irrigation is so far but we can use there also because this is called a chain pump. We can enlarge the chain and utilize over there. Now what is this method exactly? We are having two wheels rotating. First wheel is placed on the farm or near the field and the other wheel is to be placed near the source of the water. There we have to apply the buckets on the chain or the rope which is attached with the wheels. Now slowly slowly what will happen? They are made on a different level so that the water will be carried by the source of the water and will be reaching to the field. There it will be placed to downwards position so that the water is falling on the farm. Again the same bucket will be moved in the chain as the series goes on and again it will be dipped into the water source and then again it is filled and coming back to the farm. You can see in the picture which is given over on the screen. Now next one we have is it was very ancient method because it was using the pair of the bull or ox or the persons who are utilized to make it move. So it was traditional method. Now what happens in this? Here we have to attach or make two wheels where one is rotating on the source of the water and the other one is underground the water uh, sorry underground the soil or the land which is connected directly to the pair of the bulls with the log of the wood okay so here the bull or the ox will be moving in a circular motion this will be connected to the circular wheel which is on the source of the water now slowly slowly with the help of the rotation while the oxes or the bulls are rotating over there this wheel will also be start moving and will take out the water in the buckets which is attached to the wheels these buckets will be filled with the water and when it is again coming on the other side of the wheel it will be just thrown on the farm or the field there will be the canals prepared nearby them so the water will be directly going through the canal to the particular area of the crops now this is what the dekli and sorry this is what this the rahat was it was the rahat which i have described just now now let us go with the dekli dekli word means the y shaped log is there you can see the picture over there of the dekli a y shaped log is here something like this is placed on the land now what will happen a seashore like structure we have to prepare a wood log is placed over here which will be acting as the seesaw you must have seen that now what we have to do is apply a big stone heavy stone over there on one of the side of the log on the other side this is being connected with the bucket which is to be placed in the well so as soon as the bucket is empty it will be poured down in the well. Now loosening this, we will be having the bucket inside the well. But as soon as the bucket will be filled, we have to again place the rock over here so that the bucket can be carried upward. This is again an ancient method because nowadays nobody would prefer to do this. So what happens when the bucket is filled, we will be taking this out with the help of the heavy, heavy rock over here, placing them. So it is acting like a seesaw method. Okay, so this is what the Dekli is. So we have came across with the four traditional methods. The first one is the pulley system, then chain pump, then Dekli and the Rahat where the pair of the ox or bull or human beings are rotating and they are taking out the water through the pump. Now we come with the modern methods. Now what are the modern methods? We have two modern methods for irrigation. One is sprinkler system and the other is drip system. Now you must have seen while going through the villages areas that in the side by of the road you must have find out that the sprinkling systems are going on because that is visible from far away. 
as we know that the system of the sprinkling means it comes like a fountain or it comes like a rain from the small pipes. This is why they are parallelly arranged in the farms a pipe like structure which will be throwing the water from the top of the nozzles which are placed on these pipes. Suppose these are the pipes which are placed on the farm. Now here is a triangular structure like nozzle structure which will be giving the water out. But as soon as this water will be out, they will be start moving and rotating. Thus it will be sprinkling the water throughout them as if it is raining in the farm. So it will be seems to be like rain when the sprinkling system is applied to the farms. Now we come with the next point. Now for sprinkling system we have that it can be used for the plantation of this other cropping also because all the types of the crops can be have in this system. Now next that come is the drip system. Now drip word itself says that there will be some dropping of the water that will be used to have in the system. Yes you are correct to suggest it. Because we know that drip system means it will be having the drips of the water at different different areas. Now here also parallel pipes are arranged in the farms in such a way that they are opened near the plant where it is grown. Suppose this is our plant or the crops in the farm and they are having the pipes having the holes over here or you can have small pipelines also attached over here in such a way that drop by drop the water is being poured to the nearby place where the plants are near the roots where they are the water will be poured so that there will be no wastage of the water in this method if the sufficient amount of water is not available over there in that areas we can have this system that is drip system which is very effective in this production of the crops with the less amount of the water to be utilized. Now this is to be used in specially for the plants where the fruits are there means orchard are there orchards in that areas we can have this drip system very nicely working. Now here comes the next topic after irrigation is protection from the weeds. Now weeds word comes to our mind what is the meaning of the weeds? Now, unwanted plants which will be growing along with the crop will be known as the weeds because we never grew it but it will start growing by itself we have never sow them but still it will be start growing from them so what will the weeds do weeds will be taking the nutrients which are required by the cropping but they will be also taking from that so they will be competing them so we don't want these weeds to be grown in the farm or the field for that purpose we need to take it out manually or by applying some chemicals so that they will start burning inside the soil now what are the remedies by which we can take them out first of all as we say that manually also we can take them out so weeds when taken out manually by the help of the sickle or by uprooting them completely from the soil that is known as weeding this method in which we will just uproot them from the soil or we cut near the roots with the help of the sickle will be known as weeding the other method by which we can have the chemicals or the spraying of these chemicals by which it will be affecting just the weeds not the crops so weeds will be drying for this purpose we need to apply some chemicals in that that method is called weedy sites where we have an example of the weedy site that is 24d we can have this 24d to be applied to be sprayed in the field where it will be affecting just the weeds to make them dry to make them bury and thus the crops will be secured but the weeds will be drying and will be dying by themselves so weedicides are required to spray over the crops but there is one problem when it is a chemical as we know that all the chemicals are not good for human beings but is it been the, it is being spread by the human beings only so what we have to do we have to take care while spraying this in the field what are the things or the aspects that we have to look out when we are spraying these things we have to apply the mask on the face that will be covering our nose our mouth and even our ears also to be covered completely so that it will not be inhaled by our body we have to cover our hands with the help of the gloves so that it will not be in touch with our skin 
So these are the things we have to look after when we are spraying the weedicide specially that is the chemical in the field for the not growing of the weeds or to make the weeds to bury in the farm. So here is the topic that protection from the weeds we have to look out. Now next we come is with the harvesting. Yes, when the harvesting to do, when to do this harvesting in the farms. We know that when the crops get matured after 2 to 4 uh, months of the time interval, they will start maturing themselves. Suppose the wheat farm is there, it is started growing from the seed, it has started germinating to the saplings, these saplings have started formation of the plants, these plants have now taken a part where they have matured themselves, means what? The grains are completely okay to take from the crops, the crops now no more will be developing in their size, not in their look so what will happen we have to just harvest them harvest means what we have to just cut them out from the soil now there is no more requirement of the nutrients from the soil because it is not going to develop so at that time when the crop is completely ready for the harvesting means they are mature enough we need to just separate them from the soil there are so many methods to separate them or to harvest them as we know that manually also we have seen on the road sides where the fields are there people used to do it by manually with the help of the sickle they will just take the sickle apply their hands on the crops and they will just cut them they could not uproot them okay sometimes they uproot them also and sometimes they cut near the root or the stem where it is finishing and the roots are inside the soil so they will just cut it from there and just separate the grains from the crop now what will happen there are methods for that now here we have the harvesting methods called as harvesting threshing combine and winnowing now what comes in this harvesting harvesting is a machine you people must have seen it in the road when they are running during this seasons when Punjab we are having so many harvesters coming on the roadways which we can see them a green colored yellow colored so many colored they will be coming a big machines they will be having the harvesters in behind them now what is this harvesters actually doing they will be just cutting the crops from the stems suppose this is the crop of the wheat we can say Now, this is the soil where the roots are deep penetrated in the soil. But what about the harvester machines? What they will do? They will just come over here in the farms or the fields. They will be cutting the crop from here. They will not uproot the plant. They will just cut it nearby the ground and leave the stem portion as it is. So what will happen in this harvesting? They will be just cutting the crop from halfway. They will be not cutting it or taking out uprooting from the soil. Though this is what the work of the harvester is. Now the second thing that comes after harvesting what we need to do is we just need we have just grown the crops for the purpose to gain the grains from that to have the profit from them from the grains which we have grown. So we need to separate these grains from the chef ok. Now what we will do to have this separation for this purpose we need to have the another machines which are coming that is called the thresher which will be separating the husk or the chef from the grains. Now, suppose this is our wheat. So, our wheat pod will be something looking like this. This pod is to be applied in the machines and these machines will be separating the husk and the wheat. Now, what is this? This is the wheat seed which is present inside this pod. Now, this pod will be how to be separated. Now, this will be taking out the shaft like this. This is the shaft portion which is covering the seed of the wheat. So this will be the wheat seed which will be separated from these shaft so that we can get the grains out of the crops which we have cultivated from so long. It has taken almost 2 to 4 months to be matured in the, in the fields. So now we will be separating them with the help of the threshing. Now there is one more machine coming as we know that in technology we have developed day by day. So what will happen? A combined named machine is coming which will be doing two things together. The harvesting also along with that threshing also. 
now as we know that we are looking only for the benefits every time so we will be going and preferring the combined machine why because it is doing both the things along in the same time where harvesting will take long time to harvest and then we need to thresher to have the in uh, farms to apply so that we can get the wheat out of it but combined will be doing both the things simultaneously now what will happen in the farm only these two machines that is combined is going to move what will be happening over there they will be going and moving parallel with each other in one of the portions the harvesting will be done and while the harvesting is being done the crops which have been harvested in the machines they will be carried out on the top and this will be through the pipeline going to the nearby machine which will be just making them threshing means they will be separating the chaff and the grains so on one of the side we will be getting grain and on the other side it was being harvested so it is much more profit less of the time duration is required less of the labor is required and we'll be getting the crops ready made being made from these machines that is called the combine so this is what the profit of the combine we have now what about the farmers who are having the less of the land where we cannot apply these types of the machines because small amount of the land or the field there we cannot apply these big machines to be moved over there and they could not even turn also there. So what they will be doing? They will be doing the harvesting manually but when the time comes for the suppression of the chaff and the grains they will be applying the machine that is called winnowing. A small landed farmer will be having this winnowing machine where the grains can be separated from the chef very easily. So for these farmers also we have the facility which is called as winnowing. So here we come with the topic to be completed that is harvesting is being done by the machine that is harvester where harvesting is being done means cutting of the crops from the field then threshing where the separation of the chaff and the grains is being done combined where two things are done along with each other means parallelly. The next one that is coming with the winnowing where the small landed farmers can utilize this machine to separate the grains and the chaff. Now here we come with the last topic of the preparation of the agricultural preparations. Now that point is the storage. Now what happens in the storage? We know that we have seen your parents to be stored the grains at the home. During the summer season, summer vacations, your parents would be storing these grains at the home in a huge amount because they want to store the grains for the whole year or sometimes they use it to have it for so many years too. Now what is the reason for that? Why they need to store it? Why can't we purchase every day and have it? Now this storage will be beneficial for us. Why? Because these grains will be giving us the nice maturity of the grains with the good quality. Now good quality grains we have taken and we have to store it. If we are not storing it, what will happen? We will get the dried grains which are not good enough for our health. So we need to store them. Now before storing, mother or the grannies are doing some work at the home. What they will do or what they will be playing with the grains? They will be doing it as they will have to just dry it up first they have to clean it up and then they will be applying something on it and then they will store it in the tin boxes is that correct yes now what is the method that they are applying in the grains first of all what they will do is they will clean it up before that they will see that yes the grains are dried if yet not then they need to dry it in the sunlight why this drying is required first of all because as we know that when water is there in any of the grains it will start sprouting but we don't want to be sprouted so what we will do we will just dry it up so that the wash whatever the moisture or the humidity is present in the grains will be drying up properly for that purpose we need to dry them up in the sunlight after that we need to have the suppression of the unwanted particles from the grains for example some of the soil particles would have been over there or some of the chef would have been added in that so for that we need to separate them properly clean it up and then we have to apply some things which are going to protect our grains for the lifetime or the one year production okay so what are these things which we will be adding at our domestic level domestic level means at our home level which we will be adding to protect them the first thing that we can do is apply dry neem leaves so that there will be no rodents or no pest or no microorganisms being harming our grains so this is one of the protecting method at the domestic level the second method that you have seen that castor oil mothers will apply a lot of castor oil in the grains and then they will be packing them in the tin box 
the next method we can have is we can apply some of the chemicals which are available in the market that is the borax which is available and we can have them in the capsule form or we can have it in the small portly with the help of the cloth packet we can make it and keep it in between the grains so that it will be protected from the rodents and pest and the microorganisms so these are few of the domestic methods which we can apply at our home for the storage of the grains in the tin or in the jute bags now jute bags when it is coming from the market we just clean it up and do all these things uh, respectively and then we add to the tin box now the matter comes with that when it is being used for the huge contain of containers where we are supplying these grains in a big amount means the wholesaler which we are purchasing the grains from the farmers the yards which are keeping all of the grains from the different different villages and keeping in, in keeping in the nice manner now how they will be preparing themselves to keep it in proper way now there are some methods to keep there also now they will be keeping in the graniers now where the grains are stored is known as granier so it is easy to learn now silos also one of the method silos are the big containers which are made with the metal which will not allow the grains to be uh, have the rodents inside it or the pest inside it or the microorganisms inside it why because they are made with the metals no rodents or pest can eat that iron or eat that steel and penetrate go over there so these are the nice things that can be stored in the huge amount so yards will be doing the silos or can have the grain yards where the huge amount of the jute bag uh, container uh, jute bags are applied where the grains are fitted in the jute bags so these things are used to be have in the big areas or in the yards especially now when we will look out for the last topic of this chapter we have food from the animals until this time we have studied the food from the agriculture means food from the plants what we are taking now let us see and have some glance over there that what type of the food that we take from the animals now first point that comes over here is looking out of the looking out for the animals now for plants we don't have to take care so much every day bathing and every day taking care feeding them or taking clean keeping the place clean for them it is not required at all for the plants whereas for the animals every day schedules is fixed because we need to take care for them as we know that they are living they will be excreting they will be inhaling all these things are to be taken care for these methods when we are taking and looking out for the animals for the purpose of some production to be given to us for the profit purpose is known as husbandry that is animal husbandry now what is the specifically animal husbandry for it is for the benefit of the human beings or the profit where we are rearing the animals for our profit is called animal husbandry now let's have a small look at it now this food from the animals is required specially in the areas where we cannot have the farming easily means the areas which is near the sea shore that is the beach areas or where we cannot have the farming so coastal areas where people don't consume these uh, grains so easy they will be consuming the food which is supplied from the sea areas means the fish or the meat they can eat that very easily because it is available in ease to them now this is what the last topic of the uh, chapter was one more thing to be added over here is fish is good for the health now the people those who are consuming that it is good for them why because it supplies with us with good vitamin d it is enriching us with vitamin d so the cod liver oil and whatever we consume that is in the medicines also sometimes is rich in vitamin d so it is to be consumed for that purpose now here we end up with the chapter but before we end up the chapter let's have a small look and peep inside the topics that we have already studied over here so going through that first of all we have studied that what the people were in olden days till 10000 bce we know that people were nomadic they were not knowing how to survive at one place how to stay at one place because they were searching for the food and the shelter then they came to know that we can stay at one place and crop for the different different types of the food grains in one place only so that was known as being crop so then we came with the few of the points where how can we do this cropping in a particular method or the way the topics are preparation of the soil we where we used to have the soil to be prepared for the sowing purpose now what we did for the preparation of the soil we just plow the field we just turn and loosen the soil 
then we done the sewing in sewing purpose what we did we first of all find out the best seed to be sewn down in the field and then we have applied them in the particular way by using some of the instruments and what were these instruments these were the traditional method where the funnel like structure was there and then seed drill was there which was very much useful and beneficial for the uh, farmers then adding the manure and the fertilizers we know that the manure is the organic one and the fertilizers are the one which are prepared with the chemicals only and if we don't want to add these things uh, be beside this we had an option that is called the crop rotation where we can exchange the crop in the different different seasons or different different months so that it will be providing the same nutrients by the other crop cropping then we came with the irrigation irrigation means supply of the water at a particular interval of time to the cropping is called the irrigation then we have gone with the sources of the water also and then we have the next topic that is a production from the weeds now what were the weeds unwanted plants which are growing along with the crops are known as the weeds to take them out manually is known as weeding to take them out or to make them bury with the help of the with the help of the chemicals will be known as weedy sites we had an example 24d is the best example for the weedy sites next we have harvesting now harvesting after long time after 2 or 4 months of the time duration when a farmer comes to the farm and looks that oh now my crops are ready to harvested they feel so happy because they had done a hard work behind that day and night they have just waken up and see the crops that when they will be growing and when they will be giving them profit of that so for that purpose before harvesting they are having some festivals in them now there are some different different states uh, making this festivals they are like the pongal baisakhi holi diwali nabiana and bihu these are the festivals which are being held with the harvesting process now this harvesting is being done by the instruments called harvester thresher combine and then winnowing we have already have a look on them the last topic that comes was the storage after harvesting all these grains we have to keep the storage of these grains so that it is protected again from the rodents pests and the microorganisms now the we have seen there are two methods at the domestic level also we have seen how they can be stored and at the huge level also we have seen that how it is being stored in the high level and the last topic we had seen was the animals which are giving us the food that is in the coastal area especially what we are giving what we are taking is the fish or the meat that we are eating and the other product that is milk from the uh, animals and the, even the eggs from the hens but we know that there are some of the benefits of this and there are so many of the uh, non benefits also but looking at this we end up the chapter here have a good day and have a nice time